suffering from so-called past traumas. Well, you may have heard this uh, point of view of a lot of people which call these things as past traumas. See, those bozos don't seem to know too much about what they're talking about. They feel like talking just like mainstream media says the greater majority. See, if it is a majority, it means it's already above 51%. You don't need to play stupid or idiot because your words already speak for you. You don't need to have a behavior like that anyways. So the point is very simple. If you suffer or you think or there are recurring events or dreams or the such in your life and they seem to point towards uh, so-called trauma, all that is trauma in your life is obviously in the past, right? What is happening in the present is nothing else but uh, a reminiscence of that, right? A defense mechanism which uh, triggers a powerful response because initially it was believed as a huge hindrance, a huge problem, uh, a huge aggressor or something like that. See, if you're young and you don't know things and let's say your mother tells you to uh, bring her, uh, you know, the teapot or something like that. But a teapot is um, not warm, it is extremely hot. The point is, you may burn your hands. As a child, if you haven't experienced that yet, and you experience it in a sudden way, well, depending on individual, it can obviously have a certain influence. This happened to me when I was young, and for a very long time in my life, I suffered from pyrophobia, right? And I was somewhat afraid of turning on the oven, because from time to time it happened that, you know, the flame got close to my skin, and, you know, that heat sensation triggered the response system, right? So whatever the traumatic experiences have been, irrespective of how deep or well, superficial they may be, well, when there is a powerful reaction towards it, well, that will leave a profound mark. And unfortunately, the mind and the imagination, the more they are left unhinged, they can end up presenting other situations as similar threats, if the uh, trigger is similar. For example, someone who feels uh, an extreme lack of attention, right? may become obsessed with attention and they will be very controlling of other people and to them if they find someone whom to spend their life with the possibility of that person leaving them and therefore being faced again with abandonment that is a bit of a problem because to them it is the same thing as losing their life so they will probably experience a similar reaction right as well a situation in which their life is realistically threatened. All of these things have happened in the past. You have to understand everything that is reoccurring is nothing else but reminiscence of that. Because when you create an attachment towards something, everything that is formed has a physical shape and obviously will seek to simply dissipate. It cannot dissipate if you simply constantly think about it. And the very simple point is, well, the more you think about it, the more you repeat it into your mind. The more you think about it, the more you are strengthening it into your mind. The reason why it appears in your dreams is because, well, in many situations, dreams are proof that something is not necessarily going on uh, well inside. They are also thought to be... Uh, let's call them mental cleansing, right? Or the mind simply removing unwanted things, right? Because each and every one day, if people don't know how to make use of their um, imagination, they will simply spend so much time fantasizing about all the things. The moment you start fantasizing about things, well, in a way, that is a big problem because it means a necessity. Necessity has always been the foundation of evolution because you know certain creatures needed a certain defense mechanism about certain predators and well evolution in time guided them towards that right it's not that there is some deity called evolution that guided them it's just that their bodies in a way used you know what i call a uh, meta intelligence or you know the intelligence beyond uh, you know the brain and uh, what we call the mind and the 
let's say, universal intelligence simply reacted. There was a necessity and, well, as they focused constantly on that necessity, it got uh, fixed in a way. If one's mind can focus on one thing and it can constantly focus on that thing, but not necessarily obsessively, uh, in a point of necessity but not obsession, uh, you can refer to it as, you know, triggering a certain uh, pathway through which, well, you might get some uh, guidance or support from different entities and, well, I don't want to present too many ideas here because people probably will start imagining things and there's enough of that uh, wokeist agenda called, you know, the law of uh, manifestation which kind of oversimplifies things and unfortunately it keeps people uh, enshrouded in uh, confusion and in a very delusionary idea that, you know, you just think about something, you buy some meditations, you repeat those words and it's gonna manifest into your life. A lot of people are very needy. The problem is, the more needy they are, they will make uh, great happiness out of the little they can receive. If they start chanting a mantra that will grant them money, well, let's say they find a nickel on the floor, they will think, look, the mantra is actually working, but that nickel was already there, right? So even if you didn't chant that so-called mantra, most likely you would have found it, right? If they find, let's say, $50 on the ground, they will say, oh, look, the mantra is actually working. But they only focus on that which, you know, draw, draws their attention, right? And the idea is, well, the need to make money, for example. They might not find another piece of uh, money or, you know, nickels or, you know, coins or paper money or whatever uh, on the street for a long, long time. But, you know, if they happen to do so, say even one year later, well, it will be of great importance to them if they're still focusing on it. So the point is, traumas will always remind you of uh, something which happened. Unfortunately, it is very hard to pinpoint the exact situation because, well, as life goes on, you will develop all sorts of new stories and you will cover things which are painful. And this happens with animals and with us, with far greater imagination, it also happens in different directions, in different dimensions and depths. And that is why it is extremely hard to pinpoint the exact source of a certain trauma. So a traumatic experience is not something to be taken lightly, but a lot of people might generalize, and generalization won't help necessarily someone. Each individual is an universe in their own way, so they have to be taken into account, well, uniquely. Now the point is, you can't ever uh, focus on other people pinpointing pain sources for you. You have to reach a certain level in which you are perceptive enough and you have a certain clarity over you and slowly and surely, well, you can gain clarity over what is inside. There are gurus in the world, there are people who can actually do that. The simple problem is which of those, uh, you know, they are genuine and whom of those are you somewhat compati compatible with? Because there might be situations in which you're not uh, gonna be energetically compatible with someone. I heard of such cases as well, but I'm not sure if a guru is necessarily compatible with everyone in the first place. Because spirituality says, you know, a guru appears when the necessity is great enough and genuine enough. So, when you focus next time on these ideas, don't think about the idea itself, about the trauma, because you remember the last time you remember something, right? Every time something happens, every time you remember something, you remember the last time you remembered it. So you're gonna remember the last time you remembered what you may have imagined, what you may have put as an extra layer, right? A sugar coating layer over the original trauma so that, you know, it is no longer as uh, terrible, as hideous as it may have been perceived. So don't get yourself fooled by that. It is easy to fall in that, in that death pit. And, well, the death spiral awaits. This being said, hopefully this video raised a bit of awareness. And, well, looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Enjoy life. Ferenc John Board signing out.